it's a beautiful day for squirrel hunting and this woods where I'm at is about two miles from my home and I'm really lucky to have a place so close that I can go hunting and today uh, the winds are about seven miles an hour and the sun's out should be able to see some squirrels so I hope that you join me and uh, I'm using um, a marlin here uh, 39A and it's a 1957 it's been in the family for a while and I really love this gun it, it shoulders nice it feels nice in the hands and and I really enjoy I really enjoy the uh, the, the style of it too um, it's a solid walnut stock the barrels 24 inches long and it is a lever action of course so you do have a little bit of delay with the hammer fall but it's not that much I have a Bushnell scope on it with a uh, drop compensator but I don't think I'll be using that it's sighted in for 50 yards and uh, so when you're squirrel hunting you know you take a shot around 35 yards max usually so um, now I, I probably will have a little bit of a bullet rise but I hope to do some head shots that's what I that's what I want I really don't want to do a body shot um, you know to, to destroy the meat so I want to stay with the headshot so the the scopes all zeroed in it's a three by nine Bushnell and uh, anyway um, I hope that you join me I'm River Roubaix and welcome to my gun kingdom Okay, if you've watched some of my other, uh, my other videos, um, I talk a lot about uh, the correct ammunition for use for squirrel. And um, what I like is a slower bullet. I know a lot of people like those new ones, you know, the stingers that go 1640 feet per second, but actually you want something slower than that because squirrels have really sharp nails and long nails and they can really grip the tree and so you want you want something with some punch to it to knock them out of a tree and if you have something too fast it might go right through them and they might just cling to the tree and it'd be a waste um, but anyway I think the best thing to use now you can use the hollow point too but um, I have with me today um, these Winchester and these are 1280 feet per second and also they're hollow points and they're 40 grain so I think it's real important to go with a heavier grain bullet too when you hunt squirrel uh, 36 grain just not really heavy enough so the 40 grain will deliver more punch to the squirrel and it'll knock them out of the tree a lot easier anyway i just got here a little bit ago and if i want to be politically correct i would i would put my orange hat on here since uh since that's the rules here in ohio to have orange on when you're hunting but anyway um i haven't loaded up yet I've been doing some filming and stuff but anyway uh, to recap um, I have my Marlin uh, 1957 um, and this is a 39A 22 long rifle um, and I already told you what I'm going to be shooting out of it has a Bushnell 3x9 scope on it 
um, has a bullet drop compensator but I won't be using that today because it's sighted in for 50 yards so <clears throat> I might have a little bit of a bullet rise since I sighted it in so the, the max is going to be oh probably 35 yards for a squirrel so um, uh, I planted myself down here close to some hickory trees and uh, we'll see if we see me. I just got here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and load up. Uh, so these are hollow point and the thing, the only thing I don't like about hollow points in these uh, Marlin 39As is they don't cycle that nice. But I'm not here for a gunfight. I'm just usually get one one chance, one shot at a squirrel anyway. And if you miss, you scare them off. So it's not like you have to reload too fast. But so the the round nose um, ammunition cycles much nicer. Now see that one went in pretty nice. Now these old marlins. They don't have a safety on them. Okay. And the way you can tell the old Marlins is because they have a they have a JM stamp here on the top of the barrel right here about as you can kind of see right there. And that's how you can tell the older Marlins. But um, and then some of the Marlins have the JM stamp on the opposite side top of the on the top of the barrel. But <clears throat> getting back to the ammunition Sometimes these hollow points don't cycle through these older 39As, so you kind of have to, you know, be careful when you go to put it in there. And I, what I always do is I carry a, I carry a pocket knife with me. And if they don't load in there and they get kind of jammed and your lever's still open, what you do is you just take the point of your pocket knife and you just Take the point and just tap on the top of the end of the nose of the bullet and then try to close your lever and then it'll usually go in. So just you just don't you just want to be careful if you're using a pocket knife. I, if I'm at the gun range, then I'll use a safety flag and so I don't scratch up any of the surface of the gun. But when you're hunting I don't really carry a I don't like to carry a uh, a safety flag with me um, but anyway just carry a pocket knife with you yeah in, in, in case that happens but all right so I've been making a lot of noise since I've been out here this morning um, doing some filming with the cameras and stuff and um, I did hear some squirrels when I got here and um, but they're they're curious animals so all you got to do is plant yourself down. Um, if you want to hike around in the woods too, you can do that. Uh, but I kind of like to just come out and just enjoy the sounds of the woods and the, the wind rustling through the trees and the sun shining through the leaves and, and just enjoy the peacefulness. So even if you don't get any squirrels or see any, it's it's fun to be out here in, in nature and enjoy yourself so but anyway i'm really glad you joined me and i look forward to keep making videos for you and, and more hunting videos for sure right but um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure you do so now hit that subscribe button and um, if you like this video hit the like button it helps me out and share the video with your friends. I don't hear any right now, but when I first got here, I was hearing them chatter. And, uh, but if I'm quiet here for a while, they should come back out. Because they're curious little critters and they, they don't like to miss anything that's going on in their environment. So we'll just kind of sit here and be quiet and wait for them. Sometimes, too, I like to, just since I have a scope, you know, I used to just use iron sights when I was younger. Well, now my eyesight's gotten worse, and I have to uh, 
have glasses on when I look at things close up like computer screens and stuff but um, so I had to put a scope on and so I haven't had too many scopes on rifles and this is the first time I've put one on this Marlin 39A uh, but one nice thing about a scope on the gun is you can kind of scan the trees a little bit and see Now, you might think to yourself, do you need, do you need uh, prescription glasses or magnified glasses to look through a scope? And, you know, some people do and some people don't. I don't need any help when I look through these. So these are non-magnified uh, glasses that I have on. These are just to protect me from limbs and uh, brush hit me in the eyes while I'm walking through the woods and stuff. But... Um, and also it's a good idea if you're going to be shooting a firearm too is to have some eye protection on so but actually i like to just sit here without these glasses on and i won't miss anything uh, when there's a squirrel around because usually they're they're uh swishing their tail quite a bit and so if I think I might see one, then I just put the scope up, keep my finger out of the trigger guard, and just kind of just scan the trees a little bit and look around. And usually you'll see some, some tail movement from a squirrel. Now, uh, John Bowser that usually does some videos with me quite a bit at the range. He has a squirrel recipe on one of our videos and it's uh, the video is uh, called uh, Savage Mark II 22 and I think we did like three videos of that but anyway you can get on there and listen to him tell you about his recipe for squirrel. Now one thing my mom always did when I would bring home some squirrel, is after I cleaned them, she would uh, put them in um, salt water overnight, cover them up with salt water in, in the refrigerator and just let them sit overnight. And she said that would take the gaminess taste out of them. So, um, I don't know, they they all tasted good to me, whether she did that or not. And, and uh, But I think I'll probably do that too. Uh, you know, when I get some squirrel, and, and uh, it won't hurt. Then, but then after you soak them in salt water, you got to take them out and rinse them off really good before you, however you cook them. I thought I might have heard some chatter. I was looking for my uh, my squirrel call this morning before I left the house, and I couldn't find it. So I'm going to have to look again. Because I've got one somewhere, and if I can't find it, I think I'll have to order one. But that'd be a good stocking stuffer for somebody that you know that hunts. I'm hearing some birds right now. But I'm right next to some hickory trees. I got hickory trees all around me. Now you might wonder what time of day it is. It's probably about 9.30 in the morning. I like to get out here a little bit earlier. But So what I do is I listen for the squirrels, their chatter, and then I also 
scan the trees, the limbs, and watch for any like tail movement. So like I said, you can you can kind of just hike through the woods slowly um, and try not to make it, you know, too much noise, but that's another way you can hunt squirrel. But um, if you just want to come out and relax and, and also enjoy nature, you, you can just sit underneath the tree and wait for them to come in your, you know, uh, immediate area where you're sitting if you want to do that. Or you can, or you can spot them from a distance and maybe move up on them and, and uh, and take a shot after you get within, you know, at least 50 yards and try to get up around 35 yards though. So these Marlin 39As, it's what my dad and I always hunted squirrel with and it's old school to some of us, but you know, um, it feels good when I shoulder the gun. It feels right and I think it's because I grew up with it and that's what I stick with. I stick with what is familiar to me and what feels good to me and what feels right. These guns, they weigh about six and a half pounds without the scope. So, you know, I'm not gonna be walking around that much when I'm squirrel hunting and it, it feels heavier than six and a half pounds. But once you shoulder it and bring it up, and you got your elbow on your knee. You can hold it pretty darn steady. But yeah, my dad and I, we got a lot of squirrels with these 39As. Now, I have his gun back at home. And that's a 39A uh, manufactured in 1952. And it just has iron sights on it. I didn't put a scope on it. Um, I intend on doing a video on that gun and sighting it in, starting at 25 yards with it and with the iron sights and just keep it that way. And uh, I'd like to bring both guns with me. And if I had like a shot at a squirrel really close, I'd use his gun with the iron sights see how I do but I find if I stay away from the computer a lot and not have on my reading glasses I can see fine at a distance and I still think I could shoot a squirrel with just using iron sights and not use a scope but you know there's pros and cons with a scope uh, I do like being able to scan the trees with it. And then also, if you want to make sure you get a headshot, like see how I have both elbows on my knees right here? I mean, this would be a really steady shot right here. But these guns just, they just feel good to you, you know, especially if you grew up with them, so. You really want a low wind condition. That way you can also hear the squirrels sometimes before you can see them. And right now the wind has really died down. It's become overcast. So when I hunt squirrel on these older guns, they don't have a safety on these Marlin 39As. And this is in 1957. So I like to have it in the half cocked position. They say if it doesn't have a safety on it for this particular firearm, half cocked, it won't fire in this position. So basically if I was ready to shoot a squirrel, I'd have to just pull the hammer back. Now, I'd like to have a hammer extension on here, but the one I ordered was supposed to be for a 1957 Marlin 39A, and it didn't fit. And they, if you read the back of the package on, on that hammer extension, it says it won't fit the serrated hammer edges. 
So if you don't want to scar these up, I would file down the extension itself before I would file this down. But So anyway, I'm, my thumb just barely fits underneath the scope. I'd have to kind of go in from the side to pull it back. Because if I went in straight in line with the scope, I couldn't get it underneath there. So you will be hearing a voiceover now. Um, I didn't want to make any extra noise uh, talking um, after I heard this squirrel from a distance. And uh, so right now I'm looking through the trees uh, to get an eyeball on him. And uh, I will be showing you um, where that squirrel is. Um, and I'll be using a, a circle pointer and also I'll be showing you different clips, um, one in uh, normal speed and then a few that are close up and um, at a slower speed uh, with a zoom. So right now you're looking at footage um, that was captured with a GoPro Black. And um, after I heard the chatter from the squirrel, I went ahead and I clipped it on my uh, ball cap. So um, right now um, we're still looking for the squirrel. Um, I'm hearing him actually before I see him. So um, once I get a good idea where he's at here, I will uh, have to move around. You'll notice that, uh, that uh, a small tree to the right there is kind of in the way um, of my shot and then when I uh, put the gun up to shoulder it I noticed by looking through the scope I, I saw some twigs that were in the way so I actually had to move to the to the left a little bit to, to get a clear shot of the squirrel but anyway I think this squirrel was um, under 50 yards and uh, so the scope is sighted in at 50 and um, I know I'm going to have a bit of a bullet rise and so what I did is I aimed about a quarter inch lower um, like around the uh, just a little bit lower than the jawbone of the squirrel I put the crosshairs on his uh, lower jawbone hoping that it would hit him in the in the middle of the side of the head and that's actually where I shot the squirrel as you'll see here in a bit but we're still scanning the trees here uh, still hearing the squirrel but not yet seeing him okay now I think I see him in one area but that's not actually yet over there but I wanted to make sure by using the scope you know a little bit behind the scenes here um, with this uh, mounting of this scope, I did take it to a gun shop and have them to have them bore sighted because I don't have a bore sighter, and uh, so I wanted to get it as close as I could, uh, also to the barrel. So I had them mount it with the correct rings, and they did a very good job. And um, but we sighted in at the range. We had to end up going back three times because the first two times the wind would kick up and, and uh, you know close to 15 20 mile an hour and we couldn't really get a good uh, uh, 
result. So we went back a third time and we were actually able to uh, be successful uh, and we had the help of the lead sled and you can actually uh, look up that video on the uh, Marlin 39A here on the, here on the channel and and watch how we did that This scope, um, it's a Bushnell 3x9. Um, I have it set on uh, power 9, of course. And um, it does have a dial on the left side of it to um, turn on for... Um, it lights up the uh, crosshairs uh, for low visibility. So if you're out hunting um, in dim light, you know, either uh, at daybreak or uh, at nightfall, um, you can uh, adjust that. Um, dial and uh, it lights up the crosshairs which is pretty nice now but during this particular hunt it, you know like I said it was about 9 30 in the morning and I didn't need the, the extra illumination of that uh, of those crosshairs okay this this squirrel he didn't he didn't move around that much he was actually sitting still on a limb pretty high up and it could have been close to 50 yards um, but I didn't I heard him but I didn't see him but we we spot him here in, in a bit and uh, it's pretty close to this location that we're looking at right now Luckily, the wind, uh, like I said, had died down, and uh, it's probably under three miles an hour right now. But it did get overcast, and uh, I think if the sun would have been out, I probably would have spotted him a lot earlier than what I did. But after I, I shoot the squirrel, you'll notice that he hangs on to the tree. And again, I'll use the pointer circle to identify where he's at while he's hanging on the tree and I would say it was probably about a four to five second delay before he actually dropped to the ground and you'll actually see that in in both clips uh, the normal speed and the and the zoom with the slower speed okay also the GoPro doesn't have that great a microphone um, especially if you have it on top of your head. So this is another reason for the voiceover. I'm sure it couldn't pick up my whispers, so I, I just kept quiet. Okay, you see this small tree to the right of me? Okay, now I have, this, I have the squirrel in sight. Okay, now I'm just going to have to move. You'll see me slide over to the left a little bit to get away from the twigs and get a better shot. Okay, there I am sliding over to the left a little bit. And also, I don't want to hit that small tree in front of me. Okay, so... We're going to come close here pretty soon, and I will show you where he's at with the circle pointer. Now again, I'm going to be aiming one quarter inch lower than what I want the actual bullet to hit. There he is right there with the circle pointer. Okay, I'm going to take a shot. There's a there's a close up shot. A 
Okay, now here's where he falls from the tree. There's a pointer. And there he is falling. Okay, replay of him hanging there by the limb there with his nails on his back, one back foot. And he'll fall here in a little bit. There he goes. Okay, so we're going to get up and move into the area where he dropped. And uh, you'll notice that I'll look up to identify the limb. Make sure I'm under the right tree. Okay, I'm looking up now to make sure I'm in a close area where he hit. There he is. And there he is. Good shot. Yeah, I was checking to make sure he was dead uh, by using the muzzle of the gun. And it was a nice headshot. So by uh, being successful with a headshot and also using a 22, he don't destroy any of the meat. A 1957 Marlin 39A-22 long rifle. It may be old school and tired, but it still remains true to this day. Squirrels and squirrel hunting have remained the same, and so should the rifles. Please hit that subscribe button and that like button if you like this video, and share this with your friends. Thank you for watching.